Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. We're continuing with uh, looking at a bunch of rotation safe decks. Um, so these are decks containing all cards that will not be hit by the fall rotation. Uh, so we've done a number of these decks, but uh, just to reiterate, these aren't claims of tier one decks. Uh, in the future, we don't know what 20% of the card pool will be with uh, Throne of Eldraine. Um, what it is intended to do is look at some decks that you can feel safe crafting now if you enjoy these color pairs. Um, and they're playable decks. There might be some new additions. But at the very least, when the new set comes out, you will have a playable deck of some nature. Um, it's also just a good exercise to kind of see what might be playable in the future. Um, we're losing a bunch of cards from like uh, Dominaria, so like Teferi's going, like Big Teferi, a bunch of other cards. So it's worth seeing uh, what's kind of going to hang around. So the deck I'm playing with now is a variation of the deck that I'm currently uh, switching between uh, for ranked. Uh, it is a Black, Red, or Rakdos Aristocrat-style sacrifice deck. So Aristocrat is when you sacrifice your own creatures for value. Um, so this version here is a little bit uh, higher on the curve. Um, we lose uh, Fanatical Firebrand, which is really good for this deck. But otherwise, not too much gets hit with the deck. So going through the deck itself, we have one drops. Uh, I've replaced the Fanatical Firebrands with uh, a couple more Knight of Eben Legion. So I was playing two in the other build. But this is a one drop that scales great in the late game. Uh, as our opponent takes more damage, we get this bigger and bigger, and it has the ability to gain death touch when needed for three mana. Uh, Footlight Fiend is basically when it dies, you get to ping him for a damage, so it works well with a lot of the sacrifice effects. Three shocks. Um, we have Priest of the Forgotten Gods, which is kind of the engine for this deck. If it goes unchecked, we can usually win the game. Uh, we get to sac tap her to sacrifice two other creatures. Um, if we do, uh, opponent loses two life, sacks a creature, we uh, add two black mana, draw a card. So there's a lot of text on this creature. Um, works very well with Chandra, where you can use the elementals and then sack each turn. So it's like a reoccurring sack engine. Uh, Rick's Mati Reveler, there's a two of, is kind of a spectacle card draw late game or early game if you have to hit a land or something. Dreadhorde Butcher, really good if you're on the play turn two, just gets bigger over time. Uh, Mask of Immolation is a way we can cycle through late game to sack creatures. I usually end up using this as a turn two kill uh, Llanowar Elf. Um, but there's games where in the past I've been able to just re-equip this to multiple creatures and then just throw them at our opponent. Works really well with Butcher too because it gives you a sack outlet. Um, I've added two Judith to my list. On uh, my list I'm not playing the Judith. Um, I prefer Mayhem Devil and Chandra because it triggers off all sacrifice. Uh, Judith doesn't work with tokens. But she is an anthem for the deck and when our normal creatures, non-token creatures die, we get to ping any target. Mayhem Devil triggers off anything being sacrificed. Opponent's creatures are creatures. If opponent escape shifts, they get hit with it. Uh, Chandra is basically primarily in this deck to cast or uh, create 1 1 tokens. Um, and then on my list, I usually go up to a God, uh, God Eternal Bantu. Um, because we got rid of the Rick's Mahdi, uh, we tweaked it a little uh, to have. Uh, one Chandra as a card draw engine. I want to see how she works in here. Kind of card advantage. Might play Theater of Horrors. Well, that's us damage. So you know what? Let's do Theater of Horrors. Or we'll try. We'll try one game with Chandra. See if because I have her in the side too. So maybe we try the Theater main. And could I not spell? Because the thing is. There we go. Theater, the cards are always available. Where Chandra, we have to play it that turn. So it's a little bit more restrictive timing wise. Uh, this is also a mana sync late game. And I'm trying out one Liliana's card draw engine in that. One of the big things that might hurt this deck, or just consistency, is we have a lot of like color requirements, like double, double, double. Um, we lose the Dragon Skull Summit. So I'm trying the Guild Gates. Hopefully, we don't get punished in, in terms of the curve. Uh, sideboard wise, we got duress versus control. 
uh, Noxious Grass for green white things, Nisa, Teferi, that stuff. Fry versus like Teferi or like uh, Hydroid Crisis, stuff like that. Lava Coils, just catch all removal. Some Tybalt's versus the Life Gain decks and some Chandra's as card advantage. So we'll try it out. I'm going to play some Ranked. And we can take it from there. So as we get started, uh, if you are planning on buying cards from TCG Player, um, I do have an affiliate link. Uh, it's in the video description below. If you can go through that link, uh, your normal purchase is the same, um, but it does help support the channel free of charge. As well as if you can hit that subscribe button, it is a free and easy way to support the channel. Uh, once I wrap up this deck, I'll have four more decks to do the write-up for part two of the series. You can catch part one on Aether Hub already. I go into a little bit more detail of my thought process and uh, kind of just reflect back on the games that I played, uh, see what worked, what didn't, and um, it's an opportunity if you do have any other preferences that you'd like to see, we can take a look there too for a, a couple future videos. Uh, this hand's a nice aggressive hand, so I will keep it. We have all our colors. If they don't have early interaction, these dread hordes will run over. So this is feather. This is probably a tough matchup, maybe. Ooh, we have a footlight. Okay. So he gonna be mindful of my life here. Feather, it, we're going to have to basically be racing them in this matchup. Okay, so they have Dreadhorde. Um, what do we want to do here? Like a Dreadhorde Butcher. Can't really get in with it. Or we can just Footlight Fiend. Just double up on foot life fiends here. That oddly matches up well, so hopefully get them to attack in. And then we'll hit them back. They have to attack in here. I'm just going to take it this turn and we'll drop Judith next turn. So now when they block it's two pings so we can hit the war boss. I end up being probably the more control deck in this matchup, which is a little bit funny of an interaction. You wouldn't normally think. Oh, they are going all in. So I'm going to block like this. Should get a bunch of triggers. We'll see if they do anything like God's willing. It's a pretty aggressive attack. With Feather, you will usually want to control the board of their creatures. And then they just end up having kind of useless spells if they can't target anything. Come on. Okay, so... Target... Target. I'm going to actually put an extra target here just in case they have a pump spell. 
most of them give like plus one to the toughness. Okay, so they blow the gods willing there to keep it alive. And just hit our opponent there. See if they have like a feather or something. Once they kind of get feather going with like 10th Street Legionnaire and a God's Willing, it's a hard cycle to break out because they can basically become unblockable versus our team. Uh, second war boss. So they Reckless Rage. They can flash back the Reckless Rage on Dreadhorde again, but that kills it. They opt for just God's Willing here. So we have Chandra. Gonna attack in this turn. They're likely not gonna want to trade. Just gonna do this for one. Ooh, we got a priest. We got us a priest. So that'll be a reckless rage target. But then it makes us have a chance to block the Dreadhorde Arcanist. We have the lava coils post board. So they do have the shock, they're going to get back Reckless Rage, kill our Rick's Mahdi, or just get back shock. No blocks here. It's pretty aggressive. Um, do they still have a shock here? They still have a shock. So they can flash that back. I don't have any spells. Chandra can't really do much. Um, I think I get rid of the Chandra here. I'll tack in there. Just play out the mask. I want them to commit to using the shock on this Rick's Mahdi. Ah, they got Feather. So how this works is they can just keep bringing back shock to their hand and recasting it. So I'm probably dead. This has trample, so it makes the math a little awkward. So they go God's willing. So they have protection basically at any time. And 
They're gonna get pro red here. Make that unblockable. So we have Dread Horde here. I think our best bet's just turn them sideways. We're not winning the kind of going long with them at this point. So that is six damage. Just play out a priest. They're going to use the shock here. Okay, so they'll be able to shock another thing. They hold Feather back. Take two. So we can Footlight Fiend. So if we attack with both, they'll take in a point of damage. We then sack it, they take another point of damage. It's two. Footlight Fiend, that's four. Let's put out the Footlight Fiend, play defense. If we can get like a Mayhem Devil, that'd be good. Priest has a somewhat hard time just with them being able to recycle shocks. If we bring in the coils. Okay, so they're going shock here. That's a five, eight. So if they have a pump spell, I'm dead. But I don't think we win by blocking. Let's see if they have a follow-up creature here. Okay. I think we're one short. Yeah. We're one short. That would have done two. So we needed a creature off that draw. Uh, in this matchup, we'll bring in the lava coils. Unfortunately, this coverage doesn't. Oh, we have the white, so. I can bring in these probably important 
uh, Chandra's for late game. Um, I'm going to be playing the control matchup in this case, so I'm going to get rid of the Judas, going to get rid of that. Uh, Chandra, we can cut down one. Footlight Fiend's a blocker. Bantu's okay. Maybe get rid of the Chandra's in this matchup. And Theater of Horrors is probably too slow. Our Mask. Yeah, Mask is a way for us to kind of push through the last little bit of damage. Try it out like that. Just a bunch of removal and some threats. Play more like Rakdos midrange. Chandra is a wave of creatures. Maybe go down. Go down in a shock. Here they're probably bringing in lava coils of their own. And then they're probably... They usually have Gideon out of the side. Uh, we'll keep this. It's pretty aggressive. Fiend into Devil. Opponent did Mulligan. Alrighty, come on. Come on, opponent. Did they get rid of your go? Oh, they got rid of your go. Come on. You multi five. Why is it. Ah, that was weird. Didn't highlight that it was our turn. My bad. Here I'm talking <laughs> trash. Okay, so... They might have odds and ends. They have the Arcanist here. What's up with this not highlighting that it's our turn? No attacks here. I'm gonna drop Chandra next turn. And then we can just start pushing in. There is a play where we play a second Mayhem Devil first. That makes Chandra hit for four. Which could be good. This is contingent on them not having like Lava Coil or something. Okay, so they're going for the double shock plan here. That is a lot of resources. Like they're wasting a full turn cycle. Okay, so play that tapped. Hit him for one here. Just say go. Hopefully no pump spell. We lost this game. I 
quite an unfortunate draw. They can Reckless Rage again and get rid of this. Do they actually do that? Okay. Because I'm like, then we kill 10th Street. So punished a bit for attacking there. Don't have any spells to flashback. Why is this lagging so much? Hey, these little guys are great. So hit in there. I don't think they necessarily have trample out of the deck, if I recall correctly, other than like Dread Horde. But they do have like God's Willing. So they can Reckless Rage. Oh, Gerd. That makes it a lot more powerful. I'm just gonna mute for a sec. The dog can't figure out where I am. My dog is incredibly smart, but at times is just completely unaware of her spatial surroundings. So they're going to Reckless Rage here. We're still live to Liliana draw. That would be great. Uh, no blocks, it's dead anyways. So they have a follow-up. You're... Actually not terrible. You get death touch. You have a burn spell. Come on. Okay. Pretty much lost this game anyways at this point. Falling down. We'll run it back. Feather seems pretty hard for us. We had light like in my current build I have lightning strike which deals with those three toughness. But it seems like that's a point of coverage that we might want to tweak our sideboard for. Cause there's quite a few components of feather that will likely remain. I wanna just play scape shift. Everybody was playing it until I actually have a deck now that just smashes it. Um, opponent goes first, we're missing a land, need a red source, I think we mulligan, gonna put back a swamp. Other hand ended up being better. All right, well, looks good. For us to curve into Chandra here. And this looks like the flash deck. Could be mono blue. Hopefully they get greedy, throw an obsession on this. 
they had the new fix to make the decks not look as tall, but now they just look like you're they always have like six cards in their libraries. Okay, well they have Siren Storm Tamer. I'm gonna go mana efficiency wise. See if they block here. Just do this now. So we're doing that because this Storm Tamer can't protect itself. And then this is better late game when they can draw cards. Okay, well. So here, just going to double shock. We can flashback shock if need be. If not, drop Chandra down. We get Fry post board. They'll get Entrancing Melody. Okay, they go Obsession here. Playing winged words. Wonder if they have a dive down. So what I'm actually going to do is equip the Dread Horde here. When they go into attack, I'm going to sack the Dread Horde. And see if we can hit the Storm Tamer. That can force out a spell out of them. Uh, did I... Oh, I screwed that up. We could have thrown a, a damage at our opponent. My mistake... I wonder what they have in their hand. Another Storm Tamer. I'm going to play around Spell Pierce here. So they go the Lookout Dispersal Plane. Hook up the Knight. So they're currently winning the race, but next turn we're going to start um, pumping up the Knight. So it seems a little bit more piratey focused mono blue. Okay, so there's Bantu. Okay, so they go Brineborn. Let's see if they block here.
Yeah, so it's more like pirate mono blue flush. Let's pump it up. Just pass the turn. Terramander can be adapted. Um... See if this resolves. Look out's dispersal. And they have the retort. So hoping for a cheap creature there so I can attack with this pumped and then if they try to adapt, shoot it. I might end up having to shoot it. And then they protect it and they still have enough mana to adapt it. So we'll see how they go in here. See if I could bait them. <sighs> they are playing extremely slow. Just pass the turn. So we can do this, but they just do that. I'd rather keep the creature. Chandra off the top would be the best. We can force their hand. We're gonna have to sack these anyways with Liliana if it resolves. No counter one time. No counter, no counter, no counter. And hit with spell pierce. Alright, so. Let's put some removal in our deck. So, Duress is good, Fry is good, Lava Coil is good. What's not good? Um, I feel like we're never going to resolve a Liliana. Dreadhorde Butcher is okay. Probably get rid of Rixmati. Cut down a Chandra. The Judas are probably fine. The removal, we got a lot of it. Which is what we want in this matchup, so we can probably get rid of the mask. It won't be as good. And then Bantu gets this card advantage. Probably just the The Judith, to be honest, run it like that. Like we're not really inter like they have a lot of flyers, so we don't really interact with their flyers in terms of blocking. They have dive down, which could complicate it. Let's 
Found some really weird. We'll play first. I will keep. So I want to get knight going first into priest. And then we can go from there. Ideally, I would like a land so then I can have lava coil available. We have the Footlight Fiend that can also be played out. Let's see what the opponent's got. So I'm going to keep Priest open just in case. They blew in a gate, so if we draw another creature or even just this Lava Coil, it can be put to work. I don't really want to sack the Knight. But if we can start forcing them to play out stuff. They go obsession here. Uh, gives them a card draw. Do we do it now? That draws us a card. We lose our board. We have a priest and a lava coil for follow up. We don't guarantee we spend the mana. I think we gotta take this hit. See what's there. Okay, they look out's dispersal. I'm going to do it now. This lets us play Theater of Horrors. Hopefully get some card draw going and it takes them off. Come on, opponent. Well, there's the land we want. Thank you. Play out a priest. Lookout's Dispersal, Essence Capture. It's fine, it's a Lava Coil target.
playing defensively. Let's see if they blow a counter here. Okay, that takes him off the card draw for the turn, which actually isn't too bad. They're somewhat flooding out now. Um, I think I'd rather just do this to get a counter out of their hand. No attacks. Okay, so they're digging now. No, ah! That's stupid. I want to see what's underneath it. What a waste of a turn. Now they're likely going to have counters up. Okay, so we can have Fry up. They can dive down here. It's fine. Take it out like that. We are not drawing lines. Bring out the Footlight Fiend. Pass the turn. If we need to, we can use this to trigger a life loss. If we somehow win this game with like no lands. Okay, so. Just tack in. Start by playing out this. So I'll pay two. They have another spell pierce. Four, six. So we're one short of just uh, winning this turn. So we can sack these two. They lose two plus four, it's six. So I can just do that and then theater of horrors them for the win. Uh, just do this. This is what happens when the counterspell deck doesn't draw anything but counterspells.
Get him with the Exaxes. Alright, so don't know how, but we won that one. Um, so looks like they're on more of a sailor plan. The instant speed stuff might be a little bit more useful. Theater was really good there. I uh, can probably run it back. Do I want the masks? Probably not. Let's run it back. Waiting on the opponent. So them being able to get their thread out early and then hide under counter spells on the play will be advantageous for them. So we're looking for a hand here that can go one drop, two drop, or just have fry in hand, something that can't be countered. Um, generally, we want to present a threat and then deal with their board like we did that last game, and then hopefully not be stuck on two lands. Come on. What are we waiting for, opponent? You know the matchup. Uh, Knight into Duress, probably good. Into Mayhem Devil. No removal, but hopefully disrupt their plan. They haven't shown Trickster yet which we don't have to worry about, like activating the ability and then them turning it off. Come on. actually a really good draw next turn we have both this duress to try to take something and shock to hit them you don't have a spell for one that can counter this come on opponent ah <sighs> this opponent this opponent Cerulean Drake. They do tap out for this, which allows us to get in. We don't have a clean removal answer for this. Curious Obsession is the take there. So we need to be aware they have a Brineborn Cutthroat. But they are mana short, so if they Brineborn, we can shock it in response. They also don't have... Okay, now they can dive down. So here we attack in and we give it death touch. This 
see if they drop that there. Okay, so they go Brineborn. Let's see if they block here. Just play with the Mayhem Devil. So if they want, they can dive down. There's two unknowns now in our opponent's hand. They go Obsession here. Fine blocking like that. Interesting play that they went obsession there. And not on this that can't be killed. This is also evasive. Just use this to gump up the board. No blocks. Just activate this. That is a five four. But we know what they have at this point. Um, this is tough. So we take the block, we don't get the Bantu triggers. But if we don't, they get a card draw with a chance of drawing a counter spell for Bantu. I think we roll the dice there. The upside to Bantu is higher. Probably gonna put, okay, so let's do the usual, bait them with the attack. So they take the block there, they're gonna dive down. They tap out to. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to draw three here.
I am happy to try to trade the Bantu with the cutthroat here. Because then I have Fry as backup. Put that on the top. That refills our hand. Cool. So I take the block there. I want him to tap to try to draw a card, and then I'm going to shock it. And now we have Fry for a follow-up play. I'll drop the guild gate this turn, and that sets up another Bantu. Chandra, Chandra, Chandra. They have negate. So there's probably no point of playing the Chandra. Let's get them to commit more cards. Try to make it as like, get them to make it as big as possible and then I'm just gonna fry it. So even if they put two more, that becomes six toughness. They can get up to five. We have Spectral Sailor. Let's see how they block. Weird that they chose to do that all during uh, the combat step. Can deal a damage. I'm gonna fry that. So they have Aether Gust. It's good. So if they don't have a counter spell, they're dead. Okay, so they have the lookouts dispersal. Okay, so they buy themselves a turn. Uh Play out the Rakdos Guild Gate. Uh, here, I wanted to, in case they have another Lookouts Dispersal, I'm going to do this now. Chandra can always flash back like a Shock or something, or Duress.
Opponents taken twice the amount of clock as we have. Fine, they go negate. As was expected. I did it that way in case they had spell pierce. So we have two pumps available. We're gonna block and block. pretty hard at this point yeah if they're blowing a wizard's retort on a footlight fiend they're pretty desperate Ow. cool got him got them good all right so take the win there beat mono blue uh, and that's the deck let me know what you think in the comments Thanks for watching and have a great one.